Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. I uh, hope you've all had a good Christmas. This is, as you can see, a cartridge expander here for the Commodore 64. This particular one is manufactured by a company called Datalux. I've never heard of them. Um, I did see uh, a date stamp or something on this before that suggested it was quite an old product. Um, there might be a copper on it somewhere, I don't see it now. But uh, yeah, we'll get it out of the box. Let's just have a look. It says made in China, it's got a quality sticker on it. I'm curious as to where I saw the year now. I saw something somewhere that said 1980 something. I think what I did is I think I looked this product up in Google and found that um, it was manufactured in like 1989 or something like that. I don't know. It's w way back. I'll perhaps stick it up there once I've checked it again. Um, you can see my nails have been cut this time. <laughs> uh, yeah, one of my videos that I've been editing for the moment actually, uh, that controller there, PS3 controller, uh, my nails were quite long. Anyway, um, I'm sidetracking. So this is described as faulty. I mean the cartridge at the edge there that goes into the C64, that looks alright. So I think what we'll do before we do anything is uh, just unscrew this and have a look inside. I'm kind of guessing that maybe there's going to be like a 74S 245 or something in there. Um, or s something along those lines to isolate uh, you know, the connections here from two of these at a time and just you know, only leave one port ac accessible. Um, it might be uh, a bit more simple than that. I don't know, there might just be one control signal or something going through this switch here. Um, so I'd be amazed if there is a fault, but there could also be a CPLD or something like that on there. Um, so I'll get these screws out, I'll have a look inside. And whilst I'm taking these screws out here, may as well point out the obvious. This is obviously so you can connect uh, three carts up to C64, and then just uh, you know use the switch there, and preferably when it's off. Um, you could do some damage when it's on, uh, although it might be alright depending on how it's buffered and stuff. Uh, yeah, you know, switch between the slots there to save you wear and tear on your cart slot. Um, it looks like there's nothing. I think there's going to be no active components other than a switch on this. Yeah, just the switch contacts. So I mean, the switch contacts could be part of the problem there. You can see all the prongs have just come out there, they're just little slidey wiper things that just uh, slide up and down on here, so I'm amazed that nobody thought to tear that to pieces actually, because um, there's going to be nothing wrong with this, absolutely nothing wrong with this at all, other than maybe a, a bad solder point, but they look all right to me I think, I'll inspect them closely uh, just to make sure, I mean there's obviously some flux on there, it looks a bit of a mess, I'll probably get some isoprop on there and just brush it down. So since there isn't much to show you, I may as well show you um, how I'm cleaning this up here just with a brush here. Uh, I just brush this IPA uh, around a bit, different directions, just around those pins to clean up the, uh, the flux and stuff. Uh, and I will just perhaps pour a bit more and just uh, tilt the board slightly sideways and uh, you know just brush it down that way. And on these contacts here, just a bit of IPA again, you know, you could use an eraser or something, that's, but I mean, look how shiny those are. Uh, there's barely any use or anything. It looks like it's never been used, actually, if you look at those. Can you see how clean those pads are? There's not even any wear from the switch marks, really, other than just a bit of discoloration at the top, top there. I don't think that's ever been used. So I think what I will do is I'll clean up these uh, the contacts here, and perhaps just... Um, I'm hardly going to need to do anything with those actually, they look pretty super clean. But yeah, I'll clean them with IPA and then maybe just uh, get the wire brush just onto the very, very edge there. Or a piece of very fine sandpaper, that might be better. The bit that uh, makes the you know the contacts on the PCB there, just to make sure they're super clean. Um, very fine sandpaper is better than a wire brush because you don't want to scratch them and stuff. Because if the, the surface of those are scratched, it can then scratch you know the, the traces on there. So just something really lightly abrasive. Um, it's not going to leave grooves and marks and things on it, that's that's what I need to do. Uh, but once I've done that, I think I'll test on continuity on the meter and just follow it through and just work out where these, that, that switch contact's going through. It looks like, uh, yeah, because there's three positions, isn't there? So it goes one, two, three. So we've got three lots of, um, uh, three pads if you like as well. So the, there must be three connections that it's making and breaking for each, you know, as you move it down to the next slot, it's, you know, it's, it's breaking the connections, there are three connections from this cart here, all the others will still be in parallel, and move it to the next one, move it down to third position, same thing happens, you know, those three connections wherever they are on here, are then broken, and uh, it joins up the three connections down here. So, it be interesting to see what those are, I'm guessing they're going to be the equivalents of the chip select signals, and I think there's like two or three, well, there must be three, um, 
I hope it's not just doing something like um, plus five ground and perhaps one of the chip select signals because that could make it kind of incompatible with certain carts I think um, although if the plus five and ground are removed you'd think it would be okay so it may well be something along those lines like the you know the plus five ground removed and then one one control uh, signal or something we've got a bit of uh, tissue there from where I've just dried it down but um, I'll clean the contacts up and we'll give it a try so I've just cleaned up the contacts here with a bit of lightly abrasive sandpaper so this also has a reset button, uh, you can see it's just one of those little silicon uh, pads there. That looks like the sort of one you could, you know, if you needed to replace that, you could take that from you know, the system, although it does seem to be clipped into, is it just clipped in? Yeah, it's just pressed into that uh, top there, so yeah, I'm not going to pull that out. Um, and then obviously, just make, I've cleaned this up previously with IPA, but just, just make sure that that pad there is super clean as well. So a bit of a correction there, there's actually four contacts, so if I'd examined the uh, thing here I would have seen that there were four of these uh, little things. You can see they just sit in there. You can only get the plastic bit one way because there's a little plastic notch on it. Yeah, so that's why this pad here is double wide, because there's two lots of contacts there. It's a bit weird, because they're all doubled up here. So that would suggest it doesn't need that fourth contact actually. It's a bit strange that it's got four and there's only really three lots of connections. It's all reassembled, uh, let's give it a go, um, just see what happens. If anything, I'm inclined to think it's going to be the metal contacts there, perhaps need retensioning. Uh, that could be uh, an issue. Uh, we'll test the reset button as well. It's, it's really useful having the reset button on there actually. Uh, I do remember when I was younger, um, when I first got into, when I was studying actually, studying electronics, one of the first uh, things I did actually was a little reset mod for my C64. I think on the back of the serial port there, there's the reset pin I think, because um, I just remember making one out of a DIN, a little, uh, nine, yeah, not 9 pin, uh, you know, a DIN for the right number of pins for the uh, serial port there, with a little push button stuck out of the the end there instead of a cable and you could just press that to reset it. Um, I've probably still got that somewhere, I don't know why, what on earth happened to it. So I'll just make sure my C64 is working first of all. Yep, that's good. So we'll just plug it into the expansion port there, that's it plugged in. And just try it again with that connector just to make sure nothing bad is happening and it's not. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll just plug the first car in, which I'm going to put into the top slot, show you in a sec. Yeah, so we've just got one car in there at the moment, so I'll switch it on. And as you can see, that's jack attack, that's worked, so I'll switch it off. I'm going to stick my easy flash into slot 2. It is important you switch off, because that's what can kill uh, various things when you plug them, when you plug carts in and out on, on these while it's powered on, you will destroy the C64 something will take offence to that. Yeah, now we've got a problem when something's in slot 2, even though the switch is still in slot 1, which I find interesting. Let's just remove the easy flash. It may be that certain types of car will be a problem. Um, I didn't do what I said I was going to do yet, uh, which was just, just to trace the connections just to see where they're going to. So this one's Navy Seals now in slot 2. So Jack Attack and Navy Seals seem to coexist. If I switch it off, and switch the switch to slot 2, in theory that should now be navy seals, and it is. Um, so it just leaves me at this point in time wondering why um, the easy flash won't work with it. So I think what I'll do is I've got another car I think somewhere, I've got radar rat race, I'll stick that into slot 3, just make sure we can switch between all three slots. So I've got a nice little collection of carts plugged in there now, let's try that. So that's on slot 2, let's go to slot 3, switch it off, switch over, switch on. There we go, radar rat race. Uh, go back to slot 1, should be jack attack. Sweet. So it is actually working, it's just a question about the easy flash. So let's try the easy flash in slot 3. Uh, I'm, not, I'm guessing it's not going to make any difference which slot the easy flash is in. It's more likely to be a particular connection that needs to be uh, broken and isn't being broken by the looks of things I would think. Yeah, you see it's not doing anything now. So there is a clash going on when the easy flash is plugged in there. 
Um, let's just try switching that switch on the Easy Flash because that could be something to do with it. No, it's not. The Easy Flash just doesn't want to coexist with the, the, other, the other carts, I think. And just to be logical here, let's, uh, I've removed all the other carts, let's just try the Easy Flash itself in slot 1. Because that should work, in theory. Yeah, there we go. Straight to the diagnostics. Uh, now, it may well be, uh, I was going to say, maybe because this is a diag cart, but I don't think so. It's going to be using all the same connections regardless of what car is actually programmed on there, or is it? Yeah, so interestingly enough, the Easy Flash will work when it's um, when the jack attacks in slot 2. Let's just try slot 2. Now, oh yeah, okay, yeah, jack attack is the thing that's taking offence to the Easy Flash car, I think. It's funny how it starts and then it goes off. That is curious. So we'll remove that uh, jack attack and let's just try um, radar rat racing slot 2. Just to see if that's happy or not. That seems to be. That is strange. So now the Easy Flash in slot 1. Navy Seals in slot 2, we switched on to Navy Seals, let's see what happens with that. And that's working now as well, actually, I think. Yeah, if I was to hazard a guess, I would think that those little contacts are perhaps not making a, a perfect connection. There might even be some special thing going on here where one slot has got a connection that the other two don't have off. I don't think so, it didn't look that, that way from the tracers. But it's strange how that's now working. Let me try jack, jack attack in slot 3. And we'll switch to slot 3. You know, jack attack just doesn't want to doesn't want to boot that way. Yeah, so slot 1's working, slot 2. And again, that's working. So I would suggest that it's, it's all going to be about compatibility between the connections. Some carts are going to be using connections that could cause problems because you know they're not, they're not broken, like I said, by that switch. An ideal solution would be to you know buffer, isolate with high impedance all uh, of the connections. Really, you know, data address processor. You probably don't need to, um, but I think at this point, what we'll do is I'm just going to take it to pieces again and just do a bit of connectivity testing. As I said, I would at the start, and just let's have a look exactly which connections are uh, you know are made and broken. So the first part up here, the one with the dual width. Uh, connection if you like that for measure it goes down to uh, here this dual wide connection again and just looking at the pin out that's the plus that's those are the VCC rails so there's two pins two connections there for five volts so one of the connections is definitely for five volts and that's it's isolating it um, in fact actually what it's doing is joining it up as you you know the, the switch here makes a connection to that trace there that's going to be feeding five volts through to uh, the VCC pins on each of the respective things here depending on which position it's in. So 5 volts is one of them. Now we can confirm that if I just uh, put that first contact there and I'll just put it down to the 5 volts connections on the edge down here so yeah we've got a short uh, and if I just check these two, skip the first pin that's going to be ground and then you've got 5 volts um, and if we just go down to that pad there so you can see in the first position slot 1 is going to have 5 volts and if I just move the probe down to the second pin on the bottom row, the next one there's nothing. And the same thing, you perhaps can't see it because I'm handing the way on the third slot, nothing. But if we go back to uh, the second one there, pin, uh, second pin there, so we're on the VCC pin on the slot here, that's going to correspond with the second contact up here. And then uh, likewise, the third pin, nothing, the first pin, nothing. Move down to the, the switch down to the third position because that's what it would be doing, connecting this pad here to there. And then just check uh, on the uh, second pin down here. You can see again we've got a connection there. So that's all that, that first contact there is doing is moving the five volts between from this pin to that pin to that pin. So the next connection there, um, the second one, is going down to. Um, this pin here, which is the XROM pin. I think if we count across from here, we've got the two VCC rails, one, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, six across from there. And just looking at the pin outs, like I said, that's the XROM ports. So if we then test from uh, each of the um, 
second lot of pads here we should get the uh, the same corresponding pin here so that's the that was a VCC that was a VCC one two three four five six yeah there we go so we've got the XROM pin there on the slot one nothing on the uh, second position there which should be that one nothing on the other two let's go down to the third one is that one is it that one which one is it one two Yeah, nothing on those two, but connection there. So, the, like I said, the first one's a VCC, second one's X-ROM. So I guess it should be no surprise that third contact actually is the one uh, before the one we just looked at, um, which is the um, game slash game uh, connection there. So we could do a similar thing, I think, if we go from these pads here. Um, the first one should be up here somewhere, I think. Yeah, there we go. Um, and nothing on the yeah nothing on the second switch position, and then it's going to be the same down here. Nothing again on the other two, and then the third one should be down here. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, VCC XROM game. So where does that leave us, and why doesn't this work um, with these particular casts? You know, on the Easy Flash. Well, the first few pins there, well, the first one I mentioned was ground, but then the two that switch, the first, the two that join together, the double width uh, pad there on the switch contact is the five volts. Uh, but then, so the IRQ is going to be joined up for all of them. Read writes joined up for all of them. Um, yeah, dot clock, uh, that input output line. And game is one of the ones that switched. That's the third contact. XROM was the second contact. So those make sense. I can understand those being broken. Uh, the, Maybe it would have been better to disconnect the ground rather than one of those. I don't know. I can't help but wonder. Um, yeah, another input output. Those are going to be joined up. I mean, all of these are going to be joined up from this point on. So the ROMs are all in parallel. BA, bus available, DMA, all of the data lines, ground. Yeah, I'm surprised those aren't disconnected. There might be a reason for that. It might be better, to, safer to have the ground disconnected otherwise you could drive I don't know it can, I think it can cause problems when you've not got ground connected you can get problems with some of these other signals cause you know damage to the chips and things I think it could be wrong post down below if you know more about that and you, what your thoughts are uh, the ROM high signal I'm surprised that's not switched actually as well as, well as the ROM low um, resets those are going to be joined up non maskable interrupts uh, f is that five five two yeah clock, uh, one of the clock clocks there, address lines, they're all in parallel. So I mean all we're left with really, in my mind, is perhaps an impedance thing. Um, it could be the fact because we've got three lots of things connected in parallel and the grounds are all joined up. Maybe that's why the Easy Flash doesn't like it. Um, but as we saw there, you know, three standard game carts, it does work okay. So it just could be that it could be an impedance thing, it could be that the Easy Flash has got a lot more on there, isn't it? There's a lot of chips on that board. Um, Whereas the other chips, you know, the other cards, they're just ROM chips. It really is as simple as them just being a ROM. Um, so I'm inclined to think it's an impedance issue. So I'll have another quick play with it now, um, just to make sure that it wasn't just dirty contacts and things, because I haven't cleaned these connections up, but, you know, you can tell that they look unused. This is super clean. It's hardly had any use this at all. Uh, it's in excellent condition, uh, but if you were going to design something like this yourself, or if I was going to design something like this myself, I certainly perhaps would have had uh, a 74 LS245 or something for each slot, and then just use the switch to, I mean obviously you need more than one 74 LS245 because there's a lot of connections on there, but it's the sort of thing you could do, you could use, uh, well you'd need quite a large pin count uh, CPLD or something if you're going to do that. Um, you can maybe do it with two or three, a CPLD for each one. It's a bit of an overkill, but the whole idea of uh, you know having total bus isolation on all the connections there um, would make that then 100% uh, guaranteed to work with any three combination of carts. Um, I do think the issue we've got with this is, is probably an impedance thing. Uh, you know the fact that three, you know, two or three carts are. I've got connections running in parallel on the IRQs and on the clocks and things there. That's perhaps what's going on. Yeah, just thinking about this now, actually, just, just stepping back a bit, impedance could have nothing to do with this at all, and it could well be 
the ROM low and ROM high signals there. Maybe one or two of the others as well, but those two in particular are ringing alarm bells in my head because I've got a, a project, uh, another project I need to look at soon, which is um, a flash card that was sent, a DIY one, you know, homebrew, from uh, Mindflare Retro. And I do remember him and Hans, you know, Bewak, spent some time looking at the chip select signals and things, going to ROM chips and the, the use of the ROM X, uh, the ROM high, the ROM low, X ROM, and slash game. Uh, connections there and I think uh, I could be wrong but I think the ROM low and ROM high are used to identify what size you know where that cart maps in the memory and what size it is and stuff so it could well be that because the ROM low and ROM high are joined up in parallel on all of these that will dictate what types of carts you can have connected here it's strange how like I say these two um, when combined with the ocean one here and this is a 512k car those all coexist, which is a bit strange. I could understand if maybe these, oops, sorry, these two coexisted because they're probably going to be the same size chips and things and configured to, you know, to be in the same um, memory space there. Uh, whereas this one, I'm not so sure about actually. It, it, maybe as you get further into the game, it might change. That could then be a compatibility thing. But uh, yeah, the Easy Flash definitely doesn't like um, a couple of these at least. And just my final thoughts here, it could actually be the Easy Flash that's just a bit of an oddball here. Um, and I'm more inclined to think that um, newer revisions might not have an issue. Because this is an Easy Flash V1. I've got another one of these. Um, I'll probably assemble it in a few months or something. It's, I'm not in a rush to do it. But um, yeah, they, they've got the Easy Flash 3 with the CPLD and stuff on board. Maybe that would work with this. I don't know. I might get one of those at some point if I can find one at a reasonable price. So I'd be interested to know what your thoughts and opinions are um, about the incompatibility with this um, and anybody who knows a bit more about the um, way that the, uh, you know, I guess you could call them chip select signals are used, you know, for the, the game, EX ROM, um, ROM H, ROM L, uh, you know, please post in the comments down below um, and in the meantime I'll go away and do a bit of research because I've got that board to assemble I got from Mindflare Retro and I've got another one of these to assemble at some point perhaps later in the year maybe I don't know May or June-ish I think well despite its limitations there that wasn't a bad pickup actually I think that cost me six pounds in total shipped so yeah not not a bad pickup but yeah just retesting again all three of those carts uh, work fine you know the three, three that are in there I can switch and it behaves as it should do as you would expect anyway I thought you'd find that interesting thanks for watching I'll see you soon